Hi, welcome to another lesson. And this time, we are going to talk about beating the atmosphere. In this topic, we are going to determine the factors that affect the ground-based astronomical observations. Another lesson. Now, in atmospheric absorption and, and, and transmission, we know that, that the atmosphere is composed of different particles and gas. Now, because as we know that the atmosphere is a gas that envelops the Earth. Now, since that is composed of gas and other particles, so therefore, the atmosphere absorbs and scatters incident electromagnetic radiation. Now, uh, the atmosphere is absorbing and scattering electromagnetic radiation. It means that each time the, uh, the atmosphere receives electromagnetic radi radiation, it is going to absorb certain energy and it, it, and it scatters these electromagnetic radiation in all directions. Na? It, uh, hindi lang siya yung uh, one direction lang. It is in all directions. Now, remember that scattering of sunlight by air molecules makes the sky seem blue. Na? So, we know that the, uh, the blue, na? the blue, with, uh, blue light, na? so the, that is scattered in all directions by the particles in the atmosphere. Now, Lord Rayleigh showed that the scattering is inversely proportional to wavelength to the fourth power. It means that the shorter the wavelength, the higher the scattering by fourth power. And blue photons are scattered much more strongly and reach our skies eyes from all directions. Na? So, sabi nga natin kanina that the uh, according to Lord Rayleigh, the scattering is inversely proportional to wavelength to the fourth power. Now, scattered sunlight is also highly polarized at 90 degrees from the sun. So, what do we mean by polarized? Polarized means that the wavelength is traveling in just one direction. Yeah, polarized siya. And also, uh, as you can see, in the, in the, on a clear the sky that the intensity changes with the angle of your direction no? so it is not the uh, it is not the same blue as you can see uh, in all directions in the sky and take note that under certain conditions the atmosphere also emits radiation as they disturbs the incoming waves through turbulent air motion that limits the telescope's ability to achieve its ultimate angular resolution and we talk about uh, we are going to talk about the turbulent air motion on the next topic as you can see in this slide that uh, this is the atmospheric window in terms of atmospheric window the uh, there is certain wavelengths that can pass through the atmosphere without or with minimal interaction with the atmosphere okay so as you can see here in our uh, vertical axis okay so this is the atmospheric opacity okay so atmospheric opacity if we ha if we have 100% uh, opacity it means that there is a zero transmission. So therefore, the wavelengths coming from the uh, from the space will just reflect back to the space. Okay, and as the uh, atmospheric opacity de uh, decreases, it means that it is going through the atmosphere. Na? so for example, here in in radio, as you can see here that. 
from this part of the wavelength, the uh, atmospheric opacity is zero. It means that those wavelengths coming from the space goes through the land. Okay? So, now, this is from uh, gamma rays to wave, radio waves, no? So, from gamma rays to radio waves, no? Now, the, the two regions that are easily transmitted to the ground by the Earth's current oxygen-rich atmosphere is the visible, the near-infrared, and the radio waves. Okay? So these are the wavelengths that can go through the, atmos the atmosphere. But remember, the atmospheric opacity. It means that at certain altitude from the ground, it is visible. Or if, for example, at, uh, at 4,000 uh, 4, meters above sea level, a certain part of the electromagnetic, re electromagnetic uh, radiation goes through the atmosphere. No? The atmosphere is still absorbs some very narrow bands of wavelengths thus producing absorption effects of terrestrial origin. Okay? So, in terrestrial origin na raw yung other uh, purpose. Now, for ex ano, ano, what are the uh, particles that goes through the uh, what are the particles that affects the absorb uh, atmospheric absorption and transmission? For example, the oxygen. Okay, See, the oxygen absorbs strongly in a band, na, which is near 760 nanometers, and the B band near 688 nanometers. Na? So, they are within the CCD spectral range. So, what does it mean? It means that these wavelengths go through the CCD. It is composed of 40 spectral lines with such strong absorption that the atmosphere is essentially opaque at those wavelengths. Okay? So, opaque daw yung... Uh, mga ito sa atmosphere is another one is water vapor now water vapor is basically the uh, uh, steam no or uh, gas water okay so it absorbs weakly at 540 nanometers 606 nanometers 660 nanometers and 739 nanometers and also 836 nanometers so these are normally at the ultraviolet range okay uh near, near infrared sorry okay so ayan ito yung inaabsorb ni water vapor in the atmosphere so therefore uh at some point we cannot detect these wavelengths because it was absorbed by the water vapor now it absorbs strongly in several bands from 970 to 1940 nanometers so it absorbs weekly from these from these wavelengths but strongly at these wavelengths it means that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we cannot uh, detect these wavelengths because it was absorbed by water vapor. Now, since as we can see in the atmospheric window that the visible light, a uh, visible light, near infrared light, our radio waves can be observed uh, in the ground, but you are uh, ultraviolet. And ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays are effectively blocked na, by the atmosphere, by water vapor. So it 
it uh, water vapor blocks X-rays, ozone, oxygen molecule or uh, or oxygen gas, and carbon dioxide. The black ultraviolet rays. Now, we can also uh, we can also observe some of the ultraviolet range, na. So the uh, UVA, which is from uh, 400 nanometers to 320 nanometers, uh, uh, UVA absorb observations can reach the surface and excellent observations can be made from sufficiently high mountain top observatory. So baki, uh, why it need uh, why it is necessary to uh, to do observations from a sufficiently high mountain top observatory because the atmosphere is getting thinner as we go up. Na? So, therefore, the atmospheric uh, opacity decreases na when we go through the atmosphere. And uh, the other one is the UVB band, which is coming from 320 nanometers to 290 uh, nanometers. So, the uh, meron na siyang uh, may biological damage from ozone depletion. And although we can also, uh, we can observe this, but again, from a sufficiently high mountain top observatory. So, since uh, it has biological damage from the ozone uh, depletion, so it means that we can uh, observe this band outside the ozone. Now, we know that the ozone layer is in between troposphere and the stratosphere so we should reach that height in order for us to conduct these type of types of observation and last the uh, uv c band which is completely blocked at 35 kilometers above sea level now the telescopes operating at very short wavelengths must be in space or carried very high by balloons or rockets okay so back uh, so why uh, we need to uh, observe in space or at very high which is above the atmosphere no so because they are not blocked from space okay so if you if you want to conduct ultraviolet observation you need to go to the space okay so, in that case, that will be the space-based observations, no? or space-based astronomical observations, which is uh, pretty normal in these days. Now, the atmosphere is opaque at some wavelengths and transparent at others. Now, as you can see in our... Uh, in our graph that in the radio waves it is completely transparent na? so what are the main culprits that affects these uh, conditions first is the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and water vapor na? so it creates a series of windows up to 20 micrometers na? so it means that uh, if these if these uh, particles or molecules are present na, so we can only see some of the windows up to 20 micrometers na? so in short if uh, we don't have these greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and what, uh, water vapor so we can observe these up to 20 micrometers. Na? So, ano meron do sa uh, greenhouse gases na yan, sa carbon dioxide na yan, and sa water vapor na yan? From 20 micrometers to 2 centimeters, observations should be done from space or stratosphere. Na? So, saan na ba tong, uh, part na to ng 20 micrometers? It is from the near infrared to radio. Okay. So in uh, in our electromagnetic spectrum that is from 
new infrared to a uh, radio. Now, since uh, sabi dito that uh, from this range, kailangan daw nasa space or nasa stratosphere yung uh, telescope natin or the observations. Okay? Now, we, uh, at some parts, we have uh, very dry high sites. Okay? So, meron tayong mga ganyan. Some millimeter wave observations at 450 micrometers and 850 micrometers. No? So, uh, we can we can uh, conduct observations at very dry high sites. No? So, basically, na, mga nasa ano to, uh, some of it ay nasa mountain top. Okay? Now, if it reached 2 centimeters to 20, 20 meters, no? so very transparent na yung atmosphere to conduct radio astronomical observations. Okay? Now, from 2 centimeters to 20, 20 meters, meron tayong radio astronomy. Now, from 20 meters and above or beyond, no? so we cannot conduct radio astronomical observations anymore because it is blocked by ionosphere. Now, water vapor is sensitive to height in the atmosphere. Okay? So, uh, water vapor is, uh, is, uh, uh, is spread out throughout the atmosphere. No? So, kapag tumataas sa atmosphere, uh, medyo nakawala siya, medyo nakawala na siya because the change in height in the atmosphere also changes the pressure. Okay? So, may kinalaman din yun sa, uh, sa water vapor. Now, high altitude sites are excellent places for ground-based astronomy. Okay? Why? Because uh, as we go lower from the atmosphere, the water vapor is high. Okay, so and we don't want that because water vapor can block some of the uh, wavelengths in the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Now, high altitude sites for astronomy is often credited to Sir Isaac Newton. No? So because why is it credited to uh, to Sir Isaac Newton, because of this statement from uh, 19 uh, from 1730 in the optics. Okay, so for uh, as we quote, for the air through which we look upon the stars is in perpetual tremor. Okay, so ano daw ibig sab uh, What does it mean? It means that this is the uh, the what we call the atmospheric turbulence. Okay, so because this is also the cause of the scintillation of the stars. Now, scintillation means the basically the twinkling of the stars. But these stars do not twinkle when we uh, when viewed through large apertures. Now, so the only remedy is a most serene and quiet air, such as may perhaps be found on the tops of the highest mountains above the grosser clouds. Okay? So, from this state, uh, from this statement of Sir Isaac Newton, no? so, he, he already has the idea that there is an atmospheric turbulence, there are particles that affects the astronomical observations. Now, uh, some astronomers uh, tried to uh, to prove this, okay? So, uh, Scottish astronomer Charles Piazzi Smith experimented with mountain top observing in Tenerife, Tenerife, Canary Islands, which is, I believe, in Spain, in 1856 to test the Newton's idea, okay? And American astronomer Henry Dropper also suggested building observatories in mountainous areas and is known to have mentioned the Andes. So what they found that observing at uh, at high altitude sites, no, 
so they uh, they can make the observations better because of what Sir Isaac Newton said. Now, as we uh, as we as we see the relative concentrations of the uh, particles or gas in the atmosphere, majority of the gas in the atmosphere is nitrogen gas. Okay, so these are the permanent gases in dry atmosphere, no? So these perm uh, permanent gases are nearly constant. Okay, 78.78.1 percent uh, in nitrogen, the, uh, followed by oxygen at 20.9 percent. Then followed by uh, argon at 0.9%, carbon dioxide at 0.03%, and others okay, at 0.002%. No? So uh, it includes the water vapor uh, and other greenhouse gases. The only two major variable constituents is the, is the ozone and water vapor. So, nagbabago-bago siya. It depends on the uh, on the weather, climate. Now, it is not necessary to know the cross-sectional area of the beam if the area was larger and more water was condensed. It would spread out over that larger area and its depth would be the same. Okay, so because as we can see that the ozone concentration is at 10 kilometers to 30 kilometers, no? So this uh, uh, this is the region between the stratosphere and troposphere. Okay, we all know that the ozone layer. The water vapor is a low altitude phenomenon and varies there uh, strongly with temperature and altitude. No? So, uh, why uh, water vapor is a low altitude phenomenon? No? Because as, uh, if you put the pressure lower, no? so it can be solid. No? If you put the tire, it becomes a gas. No? Same with the temperature. The temperature and altitude. Now, when we talk about the precipitable water, it is the amount of water vapor contained in the optical path now, in uh, if we go if we are going to measure this precipitable precipitable water, it is in millimeters. The depth of the layer of water that would be formed if all the water vapor along the line of sight was condensed in a container having the same cross section area as the optical beam. Okay, so basically we are determining the air mass above the observatory. Now, in this case, the pre uh, if, for example, if you you have a container of water vapor, if you put the uh, if you put that water vapor condensed, now so magiging water siya. Now then get the height of that uh, water, and that is your precipitable water. It is it is basically the amount of water, no, that can rain, parang ganon. Now, atmospheric pressure below 120 kilometers is approximately given by exponential decline, okay? So, which is uh, presented by this mathematical equation you know, that the pressure with respect to height is equals to the uh, P, P naught e raised to negative uh, lowercase h over the uppercase h. So, the lowercase h is the altitude. No? So, ito daw is yung altitude. And then, yung malaking h daw is the scale height. Okay? So, this scale height is uh, basically the ratio of the height. No? And p naught, okay, itong p naught, okay, the value of h where the pressure falls to 37% of its value at sea levels. Right? So, depending on the temperature, the typical value for the scale height is approximately 8 kilometers for the permanent constituents of the atmosphere. Water vapor content falls off much more rapidly with 
height because it is concentrated close to the sea level. So if you are going from the sea level, going high, the water vapor content falls. No? Now, the air mass, it is basically the thickness of the atmosphere through which radiation has to pass. Where one air mass is the optical thickness when looking straight up. No? So, uh, does it mean that looking straight up is basically the zenith? No? The atmosphere absorbs preferentially in blue and therefore both dims and red and starlight. Okay? So, uh, this is what we call now the uh, extinction no? and uh, reddening. Now, it means that uh, the uh, the starlight is reddened, no? so it beams. Now, if we can compute for the air mass, no? so it is the second Z. What is this uh, Z? No? So, this Z is the zenith angle. Okay? Zenith angle is basically the distance from the zenith. Okay, so by this equation. So we can determine the uh, air mass using this equation. Now, so uh, recalling that in trigonometry, second is inver uh, 1 over cosine. Okay, and now uh, x is our mass and z is the zenith. Okay. So this is basically the precise uh, equation for the air mass. Now, another factor is the extinction coefficient. The extinction coefficient is uh, basically the uh, amount where the wavelength uh, weakens. No? So it is from a 3.7 magnitudes per unit air mass in the ultraviolet to about 0.005 magnitudes per air mass in the near infrared. So it means that, sabi nga natin kanina, that... Uh, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the scattering. So, uh, in that case, the uh, extin extin extinction coefficient plays that role. Okay. So, if we can see uh, blue stars, so uh, they have higher extinction coefficient. No? And if we can see uh, stars which is redder, no? so there, uh, there is only a less extinction coefficient. Air mass is variable from site to site and even during the night at a given site due to subtle changes in the atmosphere. So therefore, if you are conducting observation, you need to consider the air mass because it is variable. Now, if you just go to other place at the same time, no? so that uh, the air mass is different because air mass is uh, variable. Now, the photon arrival rate is reduced by a transmission factor, which depends on the wavelength and is number between 0 to 1. Okay, so it means that uh, transmittance is, is typically given by the exponential factor, which is similar to the uh, air mass, no? extension coefficient. No? where we have this function uh, mu sub a which is the absorption coefficient and it is in a uh, given in unit of per centimeter okay and we have the l which is the path length now so path length it is the uh, length uh, of where the uh, light will go okay and the transmitted signal will be given wavelength uh, at a given wavelength is basically the S. Now, this, again, this is the uh, photon arrival rate. Tau, which is, the trans, uh, which is the combination of all transmission factors, including atmosphere, telescope, and the CCD or the instrument. Eta, which is the quantum efficiency of the detector. So, quantum efficiency values between 0 to uh, between 0 and 1, and S0, which is 
the incident photon arrival rate. Okay? So, incident photon arrival rate multiplied by the transmission factors. Uh, uh, sorry, the uh, quantum efficiency of the de detector and the transmission factors that will be the transmitted signal. Now, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that the atmosphere can uh, can emit certain radiation. Okay, so let's talk about first the polar aurora. So the polar aurora is a non-thermal solar induced emission. So what do we mean by non-thermal? It means that the temperature does not affect this uh, emission. Okay, so None, uh, as, as you can know, uh, we have these uh, two types of the aurora, uh, aurora, which is the aurora australis in the northern hemisphere, on the northern pole, and the uh, aurora uh, australis, uh, aurora australis, which is in the south pole. Okay, so then. Also, uh, we have air glow. Okay, so air glow is a non-thermal solar-induced uh, emission. Okay, so again, the, the polar aurora is a non-thermal solar-induced emission which comes mainly from air molecules impacted by ionized particles in the solar wind that are trapped by the Earth's magnetic field and forced to spiral into the atmosphere at the magnetic poles, okay? So, visible ang polar aurora at the magnetic poles. Okay? And also, the fluorescent emission of atomic oxygen at 557.7 nanometers results in a greenish glow and weaker effect from the red line at 630.0 nanometers. Okay? So, that's why you can, uh, you can only see a uh, greenish glow from the uh, polar aurora because it is coming from the fluorescent emission or from atomic oxygen and if you can see blue and purple light so that is now from the uh, nitrogen from the air glow naman it is the strongest emission na? strongest emission at hydroxide molecule Okay? So, ito yung mga components kasi nung, ano eh, nung air glow. Then, it produces dense forest of emission lines in the uh, 0.8 micrometers to 2.5 micrometers region of the near-infrared. Okay? And, it is first identified in the optical red by Aden Mainil, no? So, near-infrared red, no? Madaano na ngayon. Ahalos para na sila. Okay? Because uh, the air glow has three components. The hydroxide molecules, oxygen gas molecules, and new infrared night glow continuum. Okay? So, if uh, how does the air glow uh, happens? No? So, if we have this uh, hydrogen atom which reacts with ozone, no? so it produces a high, uh, an excited hydroxide molecule and oxygen gas. Okay? So, the air glow is also a uh, variable. No? There is a sharp dim of emission after the sunset, no? rising, uh, rising back uh, before falling slowly to a pre-midnight dip, okay? recovering again around 2 a.m., then falling uh, slowly towards dawn. Okay, so if you can imagine that, now from sunset going down, rising back, then a uh, pre midnight dip, then recovering at 2 a.m., and going down. Uh, so, parang ganyan yung, parang ganto yung graph nung, uh, Air glow.
Now, the other one, now which is a uh, atmospheric uh, emission, which is a zodiacal light. A zodiacal light is caused by sunlight scattered by uh, tiny particles within the solar system. Okay, so yun yung mga interact in our atmosphere. It is equivalent to 22 to 23.5 magnitudes per arc second is uh, per arc second squared concentrate, concentrated in the ecliptic plane. Why in the ecliptic plane? Because it is caused by the sun, uh, by the tiny particles within the solar system. That's why it is in the ecliptic plane. Also, we have the moonlight. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, very obvious uh, additional brightness in the sky. No? So, in terms of uh, brightness or sky brightness, no? so this is our unit, the magnitude per arc second squared. So, from 22 to 23.5. So, that is relatively dim, but can, uh, uh, it can be seen no? after uh, sunset and before sunrise. No? And seasonal then itong zodiacal light. Okay, moonlight it is very bright and it varies in brightness. Okay, so uh, it is a non-brainer for us that the uh, new moon does not uh, uh, does not reflect sunlight, no? because it is basically in front of the Earth. And uh, in terms of the uh, brightness, no? so again these numbers are in the unit of uh, magnitude per arc second squared. For, for a new moon, no, its brightness is 22.0 in the ultraviolet band. Okay, uh, this is the uh, ultraviolet band. Okay, uh, 22.7 at the blue, 21.8 in uh, violet or uh, sorry visual band then 20.9 in the red band and 19.9 in the infrared okay while during the full moon so uh, bumababa yung value natin it means that it is brighter na okay so 17.0 in the ultraviolet then 19.5 in the blue blue band 20.7 in the visible band then we have 19.9 in the uh, red band and 19.2 in the infrared band okay so as you can see in the ultraviolet band there is a great a uh, dif uh, great difference, no? So visually, alam nyo naman that the uh, full moon cause too much brightness, no? It can cast shadow. No? So, that's all for uh, this lesson and I hope you learned something from it. Bye!